I can already see that I'm a rule in this kingdom. I think if I can control how they feel, I can control how they think. If I can whoop these all-stars, doesn't that mean I'm the best ever? I am Russell Hance, and this is The Russell Hance Show. What's happening, guys? It's your boy, Russell Hance. Welcome to The Russell Hance Show. And the player's performance for episode two and the Russell Crown. That's right. That's happening right now. And we'll start with Chanel. Uh, Again, we've seen a little bit more from her, but not enough to warrant giving her an opportunity, for sure not an opportunity for for the Russell Crown, much less an opportunity to even talk about. Uh, Chanel, still on the back burner. We don't really know. So we'll move on from her and talk about Daniel. Daniel, he, he keeps giving us a little more and more action. Daniel, uh, you know, Mike told Daniel about the idol, which, Everybody says, I don't, I'm never going to tell anybody if I ever find an idol, ever, ever, in the entire time, if I ever play this game, I will never. Okay. Well, Mike did that. He said that. You're saying that. You have to tell someone. It means nothing if you have it by yourself. I'm not hating on Mike for telling people, because I've done that. But... You have to trust them. And I think that... I like Mike. We'll get to Mike in a little bit. But... uh, Daniel's a little sneaky. I ain't gonna lie. He's a little sneaky. So it's very interesting to see what's gonna happen with with this guy. Because he's supposed to be the nerd, smart guy, the good... You know, everybody on this cast is so likable. Which... That's a little bit of a mistake, if you ask me. But that's what it is. That's what we have. Um, It just doesn't make a great, great season. Makes an okay season. I think that's what we're going to have. But Daniel, he... um, You know, he's just a a smart guy that's trying to make moves uh, uh, when it comes to... Mike saying the quote or, you know, uh, just voting him out. In other words, he's trying to hold Mike back from saying what he needs to say to unite the idols. It's almost like a Thanos-type nation night. Let's unite everything. Yeah. That may be a little much, but... Still, uh, Daniel, I like him. I do. Even though he's starting to be a little sneaky, I think that may catch up with him, but I like him. Let's move on. Here we go. Drea. Drea is playing this game. She won the Russell Crown last week. She, She's thinking, guys. And... When she thought about the All-Girl Alliance. And she brings it to the table. And we have one girl that's like, well, let's get rid of her. Because it's a big move doesn't mean it's a good move. Relax. You're 19. Relax. Drea is playing the game. She's trying to play super hard uh, but I think she may be around people that don't know how to play hard. That's only trying to hey, by the way, if you just make a big move, oh it's a big easy move, let's make that move. Nobody's thinking about me. Let's make this huge move and I'm going to be memorable forever. No, you won't. That's not how it works. You make a smart move. An all-girl alliance is powerful. The reason people are so scared 
And this is what Drea tried to do to bring an all-girl alliance. The reason people are so scared of an all-girl alliance is because they're so powerful. So, yes, good move by Drea. The child, 19-year-old child, we'll get to in a little bit. Next. Hey. Hey. H. A. I. I mean, your boy is a vegetarian. The only thing that we seen with this guy. Not gameplay. No, sir. Not gameplay. Uh, what was it? It was that he is so upset five days into a game it was five days I heard him say it that he has to eat something other than vegetables he has to eat meat a crab so he cries I, I mean guys we're living in the times the days nowadays you may have to eat something other than vegetables to survive. We're living in a new age, baby. On the brink of World War Three, And you're crying over here. For eating meat. Apologize, vegetable. I shouldn't have ate you. I didn't even know what you were. Will I be forgiven by the meat community? I hope so. Now, next. Jenny! I like Jenny, the first episode. Um, we didn't see much of her this episode. Maybe see more later. Next. Jonathan. I've been giving Jonathan trouble this entire season. I've been giving him hate from the get-go. I, I have. From me starting without knowing how they play. That's what I do, by the way. It doesn't matter. Sometimes our mind can change. Till now. Jonathan is, he's super likable. Uh, it's surprisingly likable. You know, uh, I like, uh, Omar, and we'll talk about Omar and Jonathan's relationship when we get to him. But I want to talk about a little bit about it. Uh, you know, he's just a likable guy. Even when he has to stab someone in the back, he, you know, he's, he's just... A, He's a likable guy. And he says, I have to look at someone's face and tell them that this, that I'm not going to vote you off when I am. Uh, that's part of the game, and that's how the game's played. I'm not so sure that we're going to see a lot of super aggressive people. That's as aggressive as we're probably going to get this entire season. Hopefully that's not the case. But everybody's nice. Everybody's, oh, oh, we, we, we don't care. We just want oh, love and peace and forgiveness forever. It, Survivor doesn't work like that. We need, we need some aggression. We need some meanness. I don't know if we're going to get that this season because everybody's so nice. I mean, I seen a poll the other day and it was like three and a half stars. Not good. Not good. Let's get some aggression. I like Jonathan now. I didn't like him in any video I've ever done. I like him. I think he's going to be a solid player. I didn't get to see him. But now I'm starting to see a little action. Even though I still think he's going to go home early when the merge happens. 
Lindsay, we've seen a little bit about her, not much to talk about at this point. I think that she's going to be super athletic. I said that on my live with, with uh, Cody yesterday. But I think she's going to be someone to reckon with when it comes to physical aspect of the game. We are still waiting on some strategic aspects. Like I said, early, we'll move on. Maria. Should talk about her last. But there she is. I said from the get-go that she was calm and collective. And because she was a stay-at-home mom, she was going to be able to, you know, just stay, stay relaxed and calm. And that's what we've seen. It was so calm that it was boring. Now, her story, her backstory is sad. Her brother passed away from C-19, and he was a frontline worker that those guys are heroes. That's the bottom line. That's what it is. We want to see action in Survivor when they do this type of stuff. You know, it's it's sad. You get people crying halfway into the movie. The movie. You get people crying halfway into the, the episode. And it's... Uh, when they're done, they're like, what just happened? It's sad. It was sad. It really was. And I'm glad to know the story. But I'd rather have known the story other than the game of Survivor. When I say that I want action and I want gameplay, I'm serious. Like, I, that's what I want. That's how, that's where the foundation of Survivor lays. Yes, that story is sad. But I want action. I want strategic moves constantly. With all this, without all these advantages and everything else that's that that's thrown in our heads you know i want i just want super good gameplay by aggressive people by nice people it don't matter what who it is just play the game i appreciate it her brother is a hero that's for another game that's for another story this is survivor i appreciate the the sacrifice that her brother gave still keep hope alive next Marianne oh Marianne oh sweet Marianne Marianne is so likable that she's unlikable uh, I think half the people really love her the thing is everyone has an opinion of her it's kind of like someone like me you love me you hate me She's the type of character that you love or you hate. She's either super, she's super likable. So you like her because she's always laughing and smiling and just happy, just happy-go-lucky type of person. Or you hate her because you are you get, uh, you just can't take it. You know, it's just too much, it's too much. Move on, too much. And I think that's what we're seeing from her. Even though... You know, her story about falling in love, it was uh, admirable. I thought I thought it was, I liked it. Believe it or not, Russell Hans liked the story. And I'm not just saying that because Jeff said, keep hope alive to her. I liked it because I thought it was, it was heartfelt. It was, it was just a good story. I see why they did it. It makes sense to me. She's going to be like this entire show, guy. I think that she has a high of, of being excited, but I think her low is just as, you know, uh, emotional. She's an emotional high person. She's going to be a very emotional low person, and that's going to be exciting to watch. Next. Mike. Mike, my boy. So they have idols out there nowadays that's so easy to find that Mike can find them. And then Mike hides them, his idol that he just found on his own. 
and then he loses it. So, in other words, it's easier to find the idol when production hides it than it is when you hide it. You hide it. It's like, I just hid that. I don't know where it is. <laughs> That's uh, not a good thing, production. Start hiding them idols a little harder and not putting, you know, a stick over it. Oh, let me put a stick over this. Don't never find it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Do better. Uh, it looks like that old Mike. I like Mike, by the way. I like him. I think he's he's very like. Everybody's so likable in this cast. That's not good. Learn from this production. Everybody's so likable. I like everybody. That's not good. So, yeah, Mike looks like next episode he loses the idol again. Hopefully, he loses it for good this time. Because if you're going to lose it twice, you deserve to lose it forever. Omar. There you go. Omar and Jonathan. Bro loves. Uh, we see a little bit of Omar. And another likable character. And uh, him and Jonathan, the bro love thing. But man, this likable stuff. I seen a poll again that they were three. This they got worse stars than forty one, and forty one was a disaster. So you can't go with a bunch of likable people. Somebody you have to be able to hate someone. You can't just like everyone. Okay, let's move on and see if we like the next person. Oh, it's a guy we don't like, but we didn't see much of. Rox Roy. Roxy. First episode, we didn't like him. And they did that for a reason. They did that because they want you to not like someone. And we didn't. But this episode looks like he calmed down. Looks like you not have no more footage. You have no more footage of us not liking someone will be a problem. This time... Not much of anything. If he did calm down, then that's good for him. Bad for us. Because we had something to talk about. Now we're just talking about loving everybody. Love and peace and harmony. Next. Romeo. I don't think we even seen him. We'll move on. Next. Swati. Tell you guys, oh Swati here. Uh, she's only 19 years old and she's trying to make big moves like, you know, getting rid of people that want to start in an all-girl alliance, which is a smart decision for the all-girl alliance, but not, this is what I'm talking about when I say not all moves are big moves. If she accepted the all-girl alliance that would be a huge positive move i'm telling you that would have been a good move i don't know if she's going to do it she's too young and inexperienced to know she makes it to the end no way she wins no way I'm trying to get rid of drea and talking to tori and tori acting like she's listening to this child is crazy to me so, it's a bad move by her. She should have accepted the All-Girl Alliance. It was a strong alliance with an advantage. You can move forward with that. And if you submit that and you stay strong there, you stay strong to the end. You go all the way to the end. You have a possibility of winning the game. Terrible gameplay by her. I think she just wants to make big moves because she don't know what the hell's going on. Next, Tori. Uh, I lost a little bit of respect for Tori this this episode because we seen her, you know, a boy got voted off, Zeke got voted off last episode, and she was like, I was just, that could have been me. That, in other words, 
not like, oh, that could have been me. I'm so excited that it wasn't. It was more like, that could have been me. And I could be eating a burger right now. I could be taking that hot shower. Uh, you know, I could be relaxing right now. Lost respect, Tori. Losing it. Day three. Day three. You can't take it. So it's going to be hard to get that respect back from me. She lost it. Move on. Next. Oh, that's it. Now we have Zach. Did I say Zeke? I did say Zeke. I meant Zach. See, you're just learning their names. So, guys, that's all I got. Still early in the game. Still some excitement. Trying to get through it one step at a time. And I hope you're enjoying my content. I have been putting it out. Because I'm trying to move forward with this channel. Uh, again, it's not always going to be about Survivor. I'm going to Thailand. I'm selling all my items. I'm sure you see that. When that happens, I'm heading to Thailand. And I'm going to do other videos. I don't even know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do some fun ones. You better believe. This single man moving to Thailand. We're going to have some fun videos. Nothing inappropriate. But maybe. No. Not. That's all I got for you. Until next time. Like Jeff Prope says, keep hope alive. Oh, wait. I forgot to give the Russell crown. I'm not going to do that unless I see some extraordinary gameplay. And we're not seeing that. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. At this point, we're not seeing it. Just a bunch of likable guys and gals. That better change. Because if it doesn't... Survivor's in trouble.